LADXHD, which I'm purposefully referring to by its acronym, is a remake from the ground up of a classic by the big N. While the original was meant to be played on a mobile device, the remake was made for Windows, which is typically a desktop solution. Since the Retroid Pocket 5 is more than enough power to get the job done, we can use something called WinLater, which is an emulator for Android devices that can run Windows games. This video is going to make a lot of assumptions, such as that you know how to use Android, you know how to unzip files in Android, and so on. If you aren't familiar with anything in this video that I don't cover, the basics can be found all over the retro handheld community, in discussions on forums and Reddit, Discord servers, and more. If you have any questions that go beyond the basics, let me know in a comment. I do my best to keep up with those and we'll try to reply to as many as I can. To get started, first we'll need WinLater if you don't already have it. You can get it using the link in the description. You may need to expand the Assets section at the bottom, and the first link inside ending in .apk is what you'll need to install it. If you're not familiar with how to install an APK, there are resources online. Now to get the game. Since it's received a cease and desist from a certain company, I won't tell you where to get it exactly, but you're smart enough to figure out where to get it. Once you've got the game, you'll need to extract it. I like using Solid Explorer on Android, so I'll choose it in List, and I will choose Extract. You can move it to another location. For the purposes of this video, we won't get into that. That's a little more advanced since you'll need to point WinLater to that drive in particular when you're configuring its container. But I've written up a few steps in the description if you're interested on doing that. I personally like doing that, but it does take a little bit of know-how. Oh yeah, you'll need the .NET thing too. It's in the description. With WinLater installed, the first thing we're going to do is go to somebody else's YouTube video. <laughs> so go over to Retro Tech Dad's YouTube video on setting up WinLater on the Retro Pocket Mini and 5. I've got a link timestamped in the description, so just click on that. We're going to be using Retro Tech Dad's video as our template here. So follow the steps exactly as he lays out in his video. Once you're done, come back here and we'll make some changes. First, for the screen size, scroll all the way to the top and choose Custom. We're going to set it to be exactly half the screen resolution of our Retroid Pocket 5. It's going to be 960 by 540. When you're done with the first one, hit the little down arrow at the bottom left corner. When you're done with the second one, press Done. That'll save you some headaches. At least some headaches I ran into when recording this video. Next, the Graphics Driver section. Use the Settings button to the right with the monitor. First, change the version. At the time of this video, 24.3.0 is the newer one. We're going to go with 24.3.0. And I know Retro Tech Dad told you to specifically enable sync every frame. I found it's a lot more stable with LADXHD in particular if you disable it. Hit OK. And then next to DX Wrapper, again, use the settings button to the right with the monitor. Leave everything default, but cap the frame rate at 60. This game can technically run past 60. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to waste the battery on your device, not only emulating Windows, but running this game at a frame rate higher than your screen can allow. If you think the extra frame rate will behoove you, you can leave it at uncapped, but we're going to cap the 60. When you're done, hit OK. Next, the audio driver. I know it's set to also by default. This game seems to play best with pulse audio instead, so choose that one. Use the settings button on the right with the speaker and increase the average latency all the way up to 90. And hit OK. Next, I don't know why Retro Tech Dad <laughs> on his video about a device with an OLED screen left it on light for the theme. I think it makes sense to make it dark, but use whichever one you prefer. And I apologize for the jumping around. This is a side effect of not hitting done earlier when setting the custom resolution. And again, because this is an OLED device, I like using a background that's a solid color set to black. Now go to environment variables. Now what we're going to do is we're going to preemptively fix a weird tearing issue where a lot of pixels kind of get stuck going horizontally as you do things in game. You don't have to fix this if you don't want to. I think it's incredibly distracting and it makes me think there's something wrong with my Retroid Pocket 5, so it's up to you. But in this video, we're going to fix that. In the description, I've linked to a Reddit comment that contains environment variables, Mesa VK WSI present mode, and Mesa VK WSI debug. What we're going to do is we're going to copy the former, jump back over to our WinLater container, hit add, and paste the name, since that's pretty complicated to type in. For the value, I'm going to type in immediate. 
I like using autocomplete, but it does tend to add some extra spaces. So if you do use autocomplete, hit the backspace to remove that extra space it adds. Hit the down arrow at the bottom left, hit OK. We've got one more environment variable to add, so go back to our list. Select the name and copy it. Let's go back to our WinLater container. Hit Add. Just like before, we'll paste the name. Press the down arrow, type in the value. This one's much easier, it's SW. And hit the down arrow again. Press OK. And that's it. We're done, so press the check mark to save your changes. OK, so we're done configuring the container, but we're not out of the woods just yet. So in the container, press the play button on the far right side. You might have noticed my containers have sort of a weird name system to them, and you'll see why when I show you. Now that we're in the container, we'll wait for the file explorer to load, choose the D drive, assuming you haven't changed that manually. If you have, you'll need to choose a different drive. And now here is where we're going to install the runtime that this game needs to run. If you try to run the game without installing this, it'll throw an error, so we're just going to take care of that right away. In WinLater, your touchscreen acts like a touchpad on a laptop, so to run the installer, just double tap your screen once the cursor is hovering over it. That'll double click it. Go down to install, and once it's done, should take just a few seconds. Press close to close it out. Now, go into the folder you extracted earlier with the game, and now you'll want to make a shortcut to it. If you're not familiar with WinLater, this might seem like a weird thing to do. We're looking at the game, why not play it, right? But trust me for a second, we're gonna wanna do this anyway. To right click, move the cursor over the game and use two fingers to tap on the game. That functions like a right click. So now choose Create Shortcut. When you're done, just go up to the X in the File Explorer window and close it out. And when you're prompted, if you wanna hit Exit, choose Yes. That will quit WinLater in our container and everything and go back to the containers list. Hit the menu icon at the top left and choose shortcuts. And this is gonna show us all the shortcuts we've created in our containers. In this case, I've already done it using my container named LADXHD Team. Now, because I've named the container that way, it shows up almost as if that's the developer. I think that looks a lot nicer in the shortcuts view, but of course you can name your container whatever you want. Just a heads up, if you do choose to have a separate container for every game, it can take up a lot of space on your device. The Retro Pocket 5 only has 128 gigabytes of internal storage, and with every container, it takes about 400 megabytes, which is a little less than half a gigabyte. So if storage is at a premium, I only recommend keeping a separate container per game if you really need to. Unfortunately, LADX HD is going to really need it since it takes a lot of special configuration. And also, as Rotaka has uh, found out the hard way, unfortunately, I'll leave his channel linked in the description below. He does great stuff. Having .NET installed, which is what LADX needs in order to run, can break other games. Last order of business, run the shortcut, and then in game, once it starts up, you can just use your controller, it'll recognize it. You can then configure your video settings. I recommend using these settings here, but configure it however you see fit, and you're done. Anytime you want to run the game, you'll need to open WinLater, go back to the menu, and choose shortcuts and launch it from there. When you're done playing, you can use the back function of your device to open up the WinLater menu and choose exit. I have gestures enabled, so I have to swipe from the left or right side of the screen. WinLater doesn't recognize physical back buttons on Android devices for some reason. Or if you want to, you can just close the app. Just don't forget to close it from the recent app list because otherwise the game will be running in the background and take up quite a bit of memory. And that should get you going with the game. Like I said before, if you have any questions, let me know. Preferably if you have any basic questions, check with the community, search around a little bit. But if you have any questions regarding configuring this game in particular or getting it to run more consistently or anything, let me know and I'll do my best to respond. Later.